almost two-year-old son who really loves looking at himself in the mirror. He stands there naked and he kisses his image. And um, he doesn't realize yet that he has these funny little bow legs and gappy teeth and that he's quite short. He thinks he is amazing. And I was like that once. I thought I was pretty amazing. Uh, when I was eight years old, I lived in Belgrade, Yugoslavia with my family. And one day this new kid came to my school and I wanted her to sit with me, but instead she sat with this other girl, Miljana. And I went home and I told my mother this and my mother said, oh, well, Miljana is very friendly looking. And I said, oh, well, I am very friendly looking. And my mum said, oh, you're a bit more <laughs> severe looking. And when I tried to get her to explain what the hell that meant, she said, well, you have a big nose and it gives you like quite a sharp appearance. And that stopped me in my tracks because I had never noticed my nose before. And now when she said that, I stood in front of the mirror and there it was, it was like this menacing mountain in the middle of my face. And from then on, basically my innocence was lost and I saw myself as nothing but this gigantic nose on legs. Uh, so my nose came from my grandfather, Gonzo. That was not his given name. <laughs> um, he had been my favorite relative up until then. Uh, he used to, he was really fun and he used to pretend like my bike had a mind of its own and chase me around with it and we would go to the park and he would catch pigeons and we would look at them up close. Um, and I should actually say that gonzo style noses are not uncommon in my people, the Slavic people. Uh, and if we had stayed in Belgrade, I would have bumped into other big noses all the time. However, just to rub it in, my family moved to Australia, <laughs> which yes, there are plenty of immigrants in Australia, but most of the population is of Anglo descent and many people have these like little ski jump noses, which were particularly noticeable to me in these girls who used to hang around the netball courts at my school and they would like hitch their skirts up to show their thin legs. And near them, all the boys would sit with Harry among them. And then a little bit further away, I would sit gonzo-like, observing them and wishing that I was dating Harry. Now Harry had won me over the first week of seventh grade. Um, this girl called Sally, who somehow already had a boyfriend, stole a piece of chalk and she wrote on the board, Sally for Richard for Eva, E-V-A, thus like cementing her place at the top of the coolness pyramid as far as I was concerned. But then Harry picked up the chalk and underneath it he wrote, who is Eva? <laughs> and that just blew my mind because firstly I thought it was like a genius piece of wordplay but also it was like a pretty maverick way to fuck with the established hierarchy of seventh grade um, and the, the other amazing thing about Harry was that he didn't really care about what other people thought which really distinguished him from me who really did care about what other people thought um, and Harry and I became friends and we talked on the phone every day uh, we discussed things such as who was seen smoking a cigarette at Alicia's party and whether cigarettes were actually cool and a way to rebel against the establishment, AKA our parents, or if they were just a tool of peer pressure and a way for cigarette companies to make money. Uh, we decided that they were actually cool. <laughs> and um, one day, Harry and I were talking on the phone and we'd been talking so long, for, like for hours, that the cordless phone receiver had gotten really hot against my face and I was kind of, <laughs> talking to him and I worked up the guts and I said, wow, we talk on the phone so much, we should probably go out. And then there was this silence for about 5,000 years, <laughs> um, during which I just was quietly hitting my head on the wall. And finally Harry said, oh, I think we should just be really great friends. And I said, oh yeah, totally. Like dating him had just been this passing thought. Um, and then I spent the rest of the evening crying and staring at my face in the mirror as my nose got like puffier and redder, as if to stand out even more and say, this is why he said no. So cut to college. Um, Harry and I were still best friends. I was fine with it. 
I hadn't just been hanging around thinking that he would change his mind, and if you think that, that is not true. <laughs> um, Harry was studying music and I was studying film and we were adults now so we did things like we smoked cigarettes and we went to jazz clubs and we watched A Clockwork Orange and the girls that I had previously envied from the netball days um, I didn't care about anymore. There were like new girls to envy now like cowboy boot wearing folk singers and pot smoking <laughs> poets so they replaced the previous girls. And I had grown into my personality. I was an artsy kid, and I was happy with that, but I had not yet grown into my nose. I still felt like it was this thorn in my front. I felt like it was the first thing that people noticed about me, like it was not friendly, like it was not hot. It was not the nose of the girl you wanted to date. So then one day I had this idea. Um, I've always had trouble breathing through one nostril. Actually, that's not... That day, I had trouble breathing through one nostril, <laughs> and I thought that maybe I could use that bad nostril as a conduit to get a nose job without actually saying I was getting a nose job. Um, and that way, it wouldn't hurt my personal brand, which was uh, <laughs> looking down on the girls who I had previously envied by saying they were shallow. <laughs> so, I went to this plastic surgeon's office and I said the lie about the nostril and he didn't really care, he was like, okay. Uh, and he took photos of my face and then he pulled them up on his computer and pressed a couple of buttons and he printed out this image of what my face would look like with the new nose. And the guy was a, like a magician. I should probably say the guy was an evil magician because looking back at me from this photograph, was my face but with this tiny little ski jump nose as if he had like looked into the self-hating depths of my soul <laughs> and said this is what you really want isn't it and i looked at this picture and it was like me but from a parallel universe who was sort of saying back to me "Ooh, look at how friendly i look look at how dateable i look look at how anglo i look and looking at that picture i thought this is not sophia granddaughter of gonzo this nose does not belong like anywhere on the entire Balkan Peninsula. <laughs> and I felt my face kind of going red and I thanked him and on my way out I trashed the photograph. Um, and I'm still friends with Harry. I've basically given up on trying to date him. We both have partners and children. <laughs> um, and sometimes I think that he is the reason that I didn't go through with getting a nose job because I was too ashamed to do something that would show him how much I cared about what other people thought about me. Um, and then I thought maybe it was because of my grandfather Gonzo because it felt like a bit of a, a betrayal of him if I got the nose job. In any case, the reason that I didn't get the nose job was not because I liked my nose. And recently I was looking back at photos from that time and I found this one photo and it's me and Harry and we're laughing and I'm holding like a plastic cup full of wine in someone's backyard and I'm sort of waving my arm in the air like my grandfather Gonzo used to do that while telling stories. And I look really like relaxed and my skin is nice and I have no wrinkles and I'm not getting up all night with a baby and my nose looks totally fine. And I look at that and I think, what the hell was I thinking? And I really, really wish that I could go back in time, that I could travel back to that little girl just after my mum told me about the big nose thing. And that I could say to her, okay, listen up, big nose. So you're not, you don't conform to some like made up idea of friendliness, but fuck friendly, it's completely unimportant. <laughs> you are funny and you are interesting and you are full of potential. You are Sophia, granddaughter of Gonzo and you look amazing. Yeah. The beautiful Sophia Stefanovic.